well wishers and welcome to my channel Aspiring Minds. In today's video, we are going to discuss Henry Wordsworth Longfellow's poem The Haunted House. So grab your virtual seats and let's begin. H. W. Longfellow, his full name being Henry Wordsworth Longfellow, was an American poet and educator whose works are celebrated for having a romantic quality and being accessible and relatable by people. He is one of the most prominent figures in American literature and is known for poems like Paul Revere's Ride, The Song of Hiawatha, Evangeline, etc. To tell you about the background of the poem, it was written somewhere around mid 19th century. The poem explores the theme of supernatural and the idea that every house where people have lived and died carries with it a sense of haunting experience. It may not be a frightening experience, but haunting in the sense that it suggests a presence of the past inhabitants of that particular house. So again to tell you about what the poem is going to be around it is going to talk about the idea that every place where people have lived and died retains traces of their presence these traces these marks which cannot be felt they are intangible but contribute to the atmosphere and character of the place making it haunted in a metaphorical sense Stanza 1 All houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses through the open doors the harmless phantoms on their errands glide with feet that make no sound upon the floors so in the first stanza the poet introduces the idea that all houses where people have lived and died are haunted in a similar way he describes these haunting experiences as being carried out by harmless phantoms by harmless spirits suggesting that the spirits of the past inhabitants move through the house quietly leaving no trace no imprint or mark except for their ethereal presence We meet them at the doorway on the stair or along the passages they come and go impalpable impressions on the air a sense of something moving to and fro so here longfellow describes the subtle ways in which these spirits move throughout the house they are intangible they cannot be seen they only have impressions left in the air and convey a sense of movement which can only be felt it cannot be seen at all Stanza 3 There are more guests at the table than the hosts invited the illuminated hall is thronged with quiet inoffensive ghosts as silent as the pictures on the wall so here he compares the number of people who have stayed in this house to the guests who come here outnumbering the current hosts that is the current guests who have come to this house are less compared to the number of people who have already stayed in the house he describes the illuminated hall as being filled with quiet and harmless ghosts who are as silent and as still as if there's a picture hanging on the wall so it reinforces the idea of how past constantly has a presence in the present moment of time The stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms I see nor hear the sounds I hear he but perceives what is while unto me all that has been is visible and clear so in this stanza longfellow reflects on the idea that the past is visible only to those who have experienced it first hand the speaker suggests that while others may think only about the present However they are also aware of the presence of the past inhabitants and their influence on the house that is how the poet is telling us to be conscious that yes you should focus on the present but you cannot forget the presence of past residents of this house we have no title deeds to house or lands owners and occupants of earlier dates from graves forgotten stretch their dusty hands 
and hold in Mortmain still their old estates. So here the poet explores the idea of the ownership of a house. That is, he says that the ownership of this house is not limited to the legal titles and deeds. The past owners and occupants may not have a current legal entitlement to this house. They may not legally be you know the owners of the house currently because it has passed on to the next generation and they have died long ago still the past inhabitants of the house they claim their former estate beyond the grave they come out of the graves and they are present here in this house emphasizing that even though on a legal level the connection may not be there however there is still a connection that can be there between the past and present because of the presence of these spirits in this house. The spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapors dense, a vital breath of more ethereal air. So here the poet describes the spirit world as being surrounded by the physical world like an atmosphere. It is there at every corner the ethereal presence of the spirit world is there all around he suggests that this spiritual dimension coexists with the tangible world that is the world that normal human beings reside in exists parallelly with the world of these spirits infusing a sense of mystery in the poem that is the two worlds the world of the spirits and the world of human beings coexists together our little lives are kept in equipoise by opposite attractions and desires the struggle of the instinct that enjoys and the more noble instinct that aspires so here the poet reflects on the balance between earthly desires and higher aspirations which human beings have he suggests that the life of human beings is governed by conflicting ideas at one moment you want something at other moment you want something else our instinct wants to enjoy we want to enjoy life including the desires that we have for materialistic things and the pursuit of nobler ideas These perturbations, this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high come from the influence of an unseen star, an undiscovered planet in our sky. So the poet says that human beings and the existence of human beings is very very complex. It is like an unseen star representing how there are mysterious forces which shape our lives. He suggests that these unknown mysterious forces may not be visible, they may be unknown. However, they have a powerful influence in shaping human destiny. As the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws over the sea of floating bridge of light so in this stanza longfellow uses a simile to compare the moon emerging from behind dark clouds to a bridge of light extending over sea this bridge of light casts a bright light upon water inviting our imagination to go through the realms of mystery and darkness Similarly, in the last stanza, the poet draws a parallel between the world of spirits and the tangible world, describing a bridge of light descending from the spirit world to connect with the human world. This bridge is going to serve as a passage for our thoughts and consciousness to wander between these two realms, that is the spiritual world and the human world, and it is suspended over the abyss of the unknown and depths of existence. He uses this imagery to suggest the <clears throat> exchange between the spiritual and physical dimensions where our thoughts travel between these bridges. Let us now look at the major themes of the poem. Firstly, it talks about transience of human life. The 
poet contemplates on how human life is impermanent and we are all subjected to die through the imagery of a haunted house he suggests that despite the transient nature of individual lives the echoes of past inhabitants linger on leaving its presence being felt even in the present moment secondly it talks about haunting and memory the poet expands the concept of haunting beyond the traditional notion of ghostly apparitions emphasizing the idea that every place carries traces of its past inhabitants these traces manifest in subtle ways as memories and echoes that permeate through the atmosphere of the house and thirdly there is a spiritual dimension in the poem which is explored that is the poet shows that the spirit world is not separate or different but rather interwoven with our everyday reality infusing it with a sense of mystery through evocative imagery and metaphors he invites readers to contemplate the unseen forces that shape human existence and interconnectedness of material and spiritual dimension of life so that's it from this video i hope you liked it do hit the like button subscribe to my channel for more such future updates thank you for watching bye